JVS review. This time we are bringing you Stephen King's latest adaptation, Doctor Sleep. Now, this is based off of the 2013 book by Mr. King, which is a direct sequel to The Shining. For people like me who are extremely excited by most of Stephen King's work, I remember loving this book when it came out. I remember hearing rumors about the movie being made. And then that little delay process they had in making the movie while they were trying to figure out how profitable this type of movie would be it comes out blows the box office away and they go ahead green light dr sleep and the reason it's interesting is because anybody who knows the history of stephen king and the shining which is this is the sequel to you know that the original shining movie stephen king absolutely <laughs> he absolutely hated it and the reason he hated it is because as rumors have been said over the years Stanley Kubrick never really read the book The Shining before he made the movie so a lot of it was based off of his interpretation so it's, it was always a question on if they're going to make a Doctor Sleep film how true can you be to the source material when you have a huge white elephant out there in The Shining movie that this is supposed to be a sequel to let me first say they pulled it off amazingly well in this movie like this is one of the truest adaptations of a Stephen King's work since I'm gonna say Drill's Game which is a Netflix movie that came out a couple of years ago this one like ties extremely like close in making it a faithful adaptation of his work again you have to change certain things as the director said who is Mike Flanagan I think he wrote it too as he said unfortunately to try to make it a completely like true adaptation of it you would have to ignore that the shining movie was made which you can't do because again it's, it's out there it's too big you know it's a sequel to the shining so we got to go with it here's a quick synopsis of it okay struggling with alcoholism danny torrance remains traumatized by the sinister events that occurred at the overlook hotel when he was a child his hope of a peaceful existence soon becomes shattered when he meets a talented shining young lady who through her own gift ends up coming on the radar of a group of sinister individuals I'm gonna say that's a pretty good way to put it without attempting to give away too much of the movie and still keeping you intrigued of it and having you like locked into it now the actors here we got Ewan McGregor he's pretty good in this movie uh, Kylie Corinne, she's the young lady in the movie. She's technically the main character of the film. She is really good. When I say she's really, really good in this movie. But the standout, and I'm amazed to say this, the standout was Rebecca Ferguson in this film. And why I'm amazed to say this, the character Rose in the book is for the lack of a better term, annoying. But not in annoying in the sense where you hate the character as much as she's just annoying because she like always gets things like, ah, it can irritate you. In the movie, it's almost the same way, but she, boy, does she pull, she pull, she pulls it off so well, so gracefully. Like, I've been like on this train of Rebecca Ferguson could be a good actress or a, a character actor, probably not like someone who can truly like take over a film and she takes over this one even with the talented Ewan McGregor she still manages to take over this film as Rose which is going to be very pinnacle something that you really need to pay attention to because it's amazing in this movie now I want to say almost everything fits the tone of the book fits the tone of Stephen King's work that you would expect uh, Mike Flanagan paces this movie well granted this movie is long it is 2 hours and 30 minutes but it still paced well it didn't feel as long as some other films that are out there on the market that may have been a tad bit shorter than this and felt so much longer it doesn't feel the full 12 30 minutes even though the first half of the film is slow in plan with any stephen king work normally the first half of films are slow of his because it's a lot of building of these characters it's reintroductions to danny his mom is reintroduced in this one like 
it's it's bringing you back to the world of the shining so it takes a minute to build that up but even while that's building up they're still ramping up on the suspense in it and that's what keeps you intrigued because you know something is going on they never fully go into detail of what uh the crew that rebecca Fogarty, rebecca ferguson is leading what they're doing we know that they look for children who have the ability to shine and they technically eat them and steal their shine or as they call it their steam and the best way to steal steam from a kid with the gift of the shining is to put them in pain and kill them slowly listen it's it's a very disturbing scene in this film where they take a kid with the gifts and they do things to him it's it's extremely disturbing if you are the type that you may not be able to get through things like that that's going to be an extremely hard scene for you to watch and see but it's so well shot and so well choreographed it's still amazing that's all it's 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 amazing now again it follows the beats perfectly it blends the world of the shining film with the shining book into making this a true sequel to both at the same time without feeling disjointed which i think is the perfect key to this and i think you're gonna love it for it especially if you're a fan of stephen king if you're not a huge fan of stephen king you may not like it that much because again this is a very slow build slow burn type of film out of four stars i give dr sleep three of them why acting good screenplay amazingly good which is shocking normally for stephen king works because normally dialogue struggles a little bit but i can't really think of a huge glaring flaw i mean it is long Yes, as much as I could give you, and it's a horror. At the end, it's it's a thriller disguised as a horror movie, because it really isn't scary in the slightest bit. And maybe that's why I didn't give it four stars, because I really wanted it to be a little bit more closer to a horror film, even though the book kind of teethers between the two. But again, if you if you love the book, you're gonna really like this movie, and that's hard to say normally with Stephen King work. If you love the book, you're gonna like the movie. If you like the original Shining movie, I still think you're going to love this sequel. So, please check it out. This has been another JVS review. Dr. Sleep, Ewan McGregor, Rebecca Ferguson, Kylie Corinne. Peace, people.